620 now, 1320 WILS. Well, you heard about Boeing, right? The uh, Donald Trump saying that uh, he's not willing to pay $4 billion for a new Air Force One. Well, now the Washington Post finding that the Pentagon buried an internal study that found that there was $125 billion in administrative waste at the department. Joe DiGuarda joins us. DiGuardia, I should say. He's a government watchdog. He is a, actually was the first CPA to ever be elected to Congress. And uh, I want to get his take on what's what's happening in government and if Donald Trump may change it. Uh, Joe, great to have you on WILS. Hey, Mike, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Well, you know, where do you start? I uh, was in Congress in the 80s. I came there as a, uh, a fiscal conservative, mm-hmm. uh, having spent 22 years in what was then the largest accounting firm. And I was the first one in history ever to leave the accounting profession at the age of 44, well, at any age, to then go to Congress and win the first time. It was very difficult, but I did it on Election Day, like Trump, and no one thought I could win. But you know what? Uh-huh. I think people trust accountants. If they trust anybody, they trust accountants. And I made sure that I made that plain, uh-huh. that that was my profession, Wait, and I was going down there and to protect things. You've Go been ahead. watching the government for so long. Do you think personally that Donald Trump is going to change the, the culture of how money's spent? Well, you know, it's too early to tell. We have to, we can't just look at the rhetoric from anybody these days, uh, whether it's Obama or whether it's Trump or anybody. Uh, but, you know, he comes in with the business sector experience. Uh, he is a deal maker, and he's got to prove now that the, the people who, you know, stood by him uh, didn't make a bad bet. And I think he's a smart guy, and I think he knows that he has to uh, do some big things fast uh, to show the people that uh, his his brand of things work. It's not going to be easy because we've kind of spent so much money. Listen, just look at how the national debt built up just in the last two terms with Zoom Bush and, and Obama. Zoom it's we have, ridiculous. We're heading right to 20 uh, to a trillion. Now, uh, here's what I want to know, though. Why is this happening? You've been there. Why is government so inefficient and so clumsy with our money? Well, you know, in a way, money has poisoned the system, and that's what Trump said. He wants to drain the swamp. You've got lobbyists for the biggest uh, defense contractors. You know, you've got tons of them. I went out to the Reagan National Defense Forum two years ago mm-hmm. at the Reagan Library in uh, Simi Valley, and the room was full of defense contractors, lobbyists, and whatnot, looking for their share of the uh, the $600 billion that we're trying to, to spend again this year. You know, when you look at it, just look at last year. We spent, in round numbers, $4 trillion. That's with a T. Now, if you looked at the mandatory spending, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, federal and civil service pensions, I mean military and civil service, 65% of that $40 trillion is accounted for. If you don't do any reforms on entitlements, and I'm not saying take away Social Security for anybody today or Medicare, but we've got to start planning to save it you know, down the road. Uh, you know, you're dealing with money that you cannot change. So then you add five percent of interest of the four trillion, and we've never had it so low because interest rates are low. That leaves only thirty percent for everything else discretionary. And guess what? Defense is half of that, and they want more money. Okay. This is the problem. So, so where do we begin? What's the first step to getting a handle on this? Well, Mike, listen. I wrote a book about this when I got out of Congress in 92. It was published nationally, Unaccountable Congress. It doesn't add up. And I talked about the credit card mentality, mm-hmm. kicking the can down the road. And I was complaining back then when the deficits were like maybe a $100 uh, billion. You're talking now, you know, trillion-dollar deficits. We may hit another trillion mm-hmm. in the next year so or two. How, how do you get them? I mean, how do you force them to, to address this? Well, well you got to you – listen, I put in a bill called the Chief Financial Officer Act. It was passed in 1990 by President George H.W. Bush. Starting in 1994, it called for audits of every department and every agency. Mm -hmm. The Defense Department has not been able to have an audit because it can't deliver to the Controller General a set of books without material weaknesses, and they still haven't corrected it. How do you start to... You know, count if you don't have an outside audit that tells you what the real numbers so are. Who, who, and I'm still, is, is it up to Congress to pass this kind of law? Yes, is that, is Cong- that it? All, everything begins and ends with, with the House when it comes to money, whether it's taxing, no, spending. Well, why do you think they, they don't want to hold these departments accountable? What, what's, the, what's the problem there? 
Well, you know, they're trying very hard with the Defense Department. Uh, John McCain's a good friend of mine, and I can tell you, he's very concerned about financial management of the Defense Department because he knows we need a strong defense, but he knows we can't have a wasteful defense. Mm-hmm. And he's the guy he, uh, about five, ten years, I forget what it was, maybe seven years ago, that held Boeing back from giving us a lease on these air tankers, you know, that refueled in air. They wanted to give us a lease that included $5 billion of interest over 20, 25 years. He says, no. So he's smart, and he's knowing. Listen, I'm talking to his financial guys, and they know that they need to do something, and they need that audit. So, I so told them. Let, let me ask you this, because the Pentagon study found that there's $125 billion in administrative waste, and they said that that could be resolved bureaucratically. You don't even have to lay anybody off or anything of that nature. Or no, that was, uh, listen, I, I read the article on that, and they had outside firms like McKinsey, good firms, that said, hey, we found out that you've got a lot of things that we can eliminate, uh, and maybe we can put that money then, this is what McCain would say, into something that yeah. is, uh, is well, hard. Does that, that sound like a lot of money to you? A, a waste of uh, $125 billion is a lot of money. There's no question. I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, $600 uh, billion that they want this year for the defense budget. I think it was 550 and sequester, the sequester kept it down. No, that's a lot of money, but that was supposed to be saved over five years. But they they suppressed the thing that you have to worry about is they suppressed the report and it got out because someone at the Washington Post I think Bob Woodward Woodward was one of them the, the guy that did Watergate you know got the story that they were suppressing the the results of the study after they had requested the study because they were afraid in this you know, arena that's yeah. toxic now for spending money, especially with the sequester, that they would cut, they would not give the but Pentagon more Donald money. Donald Trump is talking about removing the sequester on the military. Do you think he's wrong to do that? You know what? I think that's going to be a problem. I think that if we don't start controlling spending, we're going to have a big problem. How can you spend more money and then want to reduce taxes as greatly as he wants? I, there's no question we need tax reform. No question. But you cannot, you know, net-net have uh, a, 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 a reduction in taxes, and then you're increasing spending. There's got to be a, a way out. Now, I think the one of the ways we can do it is infrastructure, because there I think you should be able to borrow, especially when interest rates are, you know, 2%, they're mm-hmm. saying, uh, by the government. I think we need infrastructure, because that gives fluidity to all the economic activity in America, and we got yeah. bridges that are not in good so, repair, so saying, 300 that, bridges. Yeah, that, that will, yeah, many people would agree. Joe Diaguardi with us on WILS. Find him at truthandgovernment.org. Other than the Defense Department, what's the most wasteful department in your view? Well, you know what? I think you have to find it in every department that we've got uh, a bureaucracy that is not producing what it should be producing. And in the Defense Department, we need more innovation in order to overcome a lot of this waste. Is the we Defense Department get... number one, then, if you were to... Oh, I, I would say the Defense Department has to be number one, because we've got even overruns on a lot of these uh, weapon systems. You see this jet, this F-35, uh, it's still not, you know where it should be, mm-hmm. and now they're looking for more, but they haven't been able to so, say that the jet so is, 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 is functional. Who's, who's at fault? I mean, is it in the Boeing, in the case of Boeing, is Boeing taking advantage of the government, or is the government, I mean, how, how do you see that issue, the fact that they want to charge well, I think Well, I think, listen, the defense, the, the defense department or the contractors, they want more business. They, they, listen, their, their bottom line is to keep their shareholders happy, but we got to be smart enough to be sure we've had the we have the auditors going in there that we measure uh, as far as we can what the costs of every one of these weapon systems are yeah. you can't just tell us what we're going to spend so four, this year four billion, tell us what we're going to spend over 5 years yeah 4 billion for air force 1 <laughs> is that too much hey that i think i you know trump has a, a point there i i think you got to really look at that to see whether or not we're gilding a lily with this uh new series of air force one jets mm-hmm. I, mean, I can't tell you but I, I like the idea that he's looking at that and he's saying wait stop don't do anything until we can figure out whether or not boeing is giving us a good price on this you know yeah. everything's got to be competitive sure. well, and that's why you you can't do anything out. without having competition yeah although i don't know how many companies can really build this something like an air force one probably limited competition there. It's Joe Diaguardi, government watchdog. He was the first CPA to ever be elected to Congress. You right. can find him. And at- by the way, there's only 10 accountants there today out of 435. Amazing. We need more. Truthandgovernment.org. Truth, yeah. Truthandgovernment.org. And only five of them are CPAs. Incredible. Truth, truthandgovernment.org. Joe Diaguardi on WILS. Joe, thank you.